Welcome back to the One Shot Podcast. I'm your host, Vincent. And I'm Johnny. And in this episode, we have a fantastic movie stop for you guys today. Stop saying that. Stop. Just stop. <laughs> this is a great film. No, I'm it is not. I'm so glad that we had to watch it. Probably one of my, probably my favorite film of all time. Oh my God. Actually. I hate you. Um, today, we're going to be going over Jack and Jill. The Adam Sandler The movie. Adam Sandler movie. Um, this is a PG rating. Uh, it is a comedy and it is an hour and 33 minutes long. And I'm glad it was not longer. <laughs> Wish it was shorter. <laughs> honestly. But it was real. Honestly, I didn't even know how long it was. When we, uh, I didn't either. But, like, I actually, before it. I went to go see Multiverse, I actually watched, like, an hour of this Oh, so you before. only had a half an hour left. Yeah, but it seemed oh. fucking forever. I know. It, it, it Oh, did. my God. But, uh, uh, yeah. And this was, all, this was released November 11, 2011. That's so funny. So it was 11, 11, 11. 11. Fuck you. That was yeah. my thing. Sorry. That's why I wanted to say it. God damn it. <laughs> but yeah, um, I'm, I'm cutting actually, it. I'm cutting you out. <laughs> I'm actually a fan of some Adam Sandler movies. So like this one in terms of Adam Sandler movies is probably like on the freaking bottom. Um, Not probably. It is on the bottom. <clears throat> I like Adam Sandler. Oh, I have a funny story. Mm-hmm. To a frame. So. Enlighten us. So when I went to go see Multiverse, I, I got there earlier because yeah. I, I was having dinner with my family. And we went out, and I told my mom what movie we were doing, and and then we started talking about Adam Sandler movies, and somehow uh, I <laughs> I said Jack and Jill, and she goes, "Oh, is that the one where where he's the student?" I go, "No, that's Billy Madison." And then she goes, "Oh, I thought that was the one where he." <laughs> He played golf, and I just, it was so funny oh, because cause then I was like, I just, like, what if I just started naming Adam Sandler movies, and she was, like, relating them to, like, the different, yeah. like. Because they did that like, in the movie. What, yeah, what they if I was. They did that in this. Oh, really? Yeah, th- um, even... they were talking about um, movies in this. Jill was mentioning a movie, and it was A Wonderful Life. She oh, saying, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, they wrote about this. And, oh, yeah. And they were saying, it's A Wonderful Life. She said, why do you keep saying that? Yeah. Like, why do you keep saying that? And then, but the funny thing that, is, like, what if I was well, just... that was funny. Yeah. What, but, correlation. like, what if I was just like, oh, no, you're thinking of Happy Gilmore, and then my mom's like, no, it's the one with the football pool. Yeah, like, he plays yeah, exactly. football, and it's like, oh, that's the, that's water, the water boy. boy. And she's like, no, the one where uh, it's with <laughs> Kevin James, and, the, like, uh, they're they're on vacation. They go to that's the water grown-ups. park. That's grown-ups. And then it's like, <laughs> oh, my oh, God. Oh, jeez. No, but um, this movie was... I just thought that was really, so funny. Really bad. Yeah, no, that was that was funny. Um, I, do we have to do this? <laughs> honestly, we've done in every single episode. We've done a decent movie. It doesn't yeah. mean that they're all great, but this one is probably the worst movie that we've done. Oh my it, god! It's, probably not. Probably it is rating wise. Ratings wise, this is the worst movie we've ever I done. I agree with every single rating it gets. So nine episodes, we've done good movies. We have to do a bad one eventually. Yeah. Um, we don't love every movie that we do, but uh, this is a pretty crappy one. So the plot of the film. I wouldn't say it's a must see movie, but no, definitely not a must see. But um, if you want to laugh and cringe, a little bit, <laughs> there's a, there's a few good lines in this that there made me is. laugh. But uh, if you want to cringe and laugh, you can, you can watch this movie. Yeah. It's it's a comedy, but it's more meant for children, I think. Yeah. Because it's Adam Sandler playing a woman, and himself. Not that that's bad. Nobody but, said it was. It's just. It's it just was, cringy. It's, it's very bad. Yeah. It's just very bad. Um, so the plot is as continues. Um, Thanksgiving is usually a happy time, but ad executive Jack, or Adam Sandler, dreads the holiday because of his twin sister. Jill, also played by Adam Sandler, makes her annual visit. When Jack and his sister get off on the wrong foot, the only way to make it right is to invite her to stay through Hanukkah. But when, Al, when actor Al Pacino... <laughs> played by Al Pacino, um, who Jack needs to star in his commercial. (coughs) Oh, my God. um, Needs him to star in his commercial, uh, takes a shine, or I don't even know why he would. He he takes a liking to Jill, Jack's sister, and uh, Jack is forced to extend his sister's visit even longer. Yes. So. Uh, Stupid. Yeah. This is a really stupid stupid story. Absolutely stupid plot. Really, really stupid plot. I mean, kind of that's how his movies are, but this one is low. This one is d- terrible. This is it's not, literally not like probably the worst plot. Yeah, I mean, why would Al Pacino be in this movie? Why would he need I, him I to be know. in a commercial? I, I really um, don't. 
But like the thing is, when you when you think of Adam Sandler, you you never think of this one. No, never, not at all, because it's not good. No. But um, speaking of Adam Adam Sandler, let's jump right into the cast. Um, yeah. I don't want to be here longer than we need to be. <laughs> yeah. Um, let's get let's get this over with. Let's rock it. Um, Adam Sandler, he is known in this film as Jack, and Jill, uh, and he is known for his good performances. Yes. And uh, the Water Boy. Great movie. I love that movie. Big so Daddy. Much. That's which a good is one too. such a good it is one. a really good one. Um, with one of the Sprouse kids. Um, probably both. They probably it? switched them. Yeah, like the uh, like the Olsons did in uh, yeah, Full House. That's true. Um, he's also known for The Ridiculous Six, which was a pretty it was solid just kind movie. of funny. Yeah, I yeah. thought it was actually decent. Um, Blended, which I haven't seen in a while. I feel that one, was, like, that yeah, one wasn't that one bad. Um, and then his probably more known roles here, Grown Ups 1, 2, and then Uncut Gems. Yes. Uncut Gems, uh, I liked actually. Yeah, we talked about that in Goodfellas. Diff- yeah, we talked about it in episode eight, Goodfellas. Tune into that one. Um, but Uncut Gems was uh, actually a different role for him. He played yeah. a serious role for the first time in a while, and he did well. And he, I believe, he won some awards for that. Probably that performance. did. I would, I would, I wouldn't doubt it. But uh, yeah, um, his more prominent roles are the ones we just said, and they're much. He's much better in those. Yes. So and um, like Adam, like we've said, Adam Sandler produces a lot of his own movies, so that's why they're all shitty. Um, <laughs> no, I'm kidding, but that's why uh, anything kind of is allowed because he's the producer on a lot of them. So this movie should have never been greenlit to begin with, but it was. Dude, I'm looking at this right now. What? Okay, so we have Al Pacino as Al Pacino. Yeah. I can't believe you didn't put his most famous role. Which one? Scarface. I, I mentioned it, but I just didn't put it Where? in. Where? It's down further. I just forgot to put it in. So uh, I'll add it in right now. There you All go. Right. How you doing? So Al Pacino, known for S- Serpico? I looked it up. It was Ser- uh, Serpico. Serpico? I think. I okay. had Google say it to me. All right. Uh, so. The Godfather series. And then uh, oh, one, two, and three. Oh. Yeah. Because there was a, there was a. This series. is why I don't let you do the script. <laughs> I, I know. Well, no, there was a, a TV series. The got the Godfather series. They made they yeah. made a TV yeah, series. I, I didn't know up. that. Are you telling me to look it up? All right. No, I got it. I didn't know that. Oh no, sorry, it wasn't a. What? What? Wait a no, minute, there's wait a there's wait three Godfather movies. Yeah. The Godfather Part One, Part Two, and Part Three. Then what the hell am I looking at here? That I said there was a series. <laughs> On his IMDb, I continue. I mean, let me look at this. Yeah, go ahead. Dog Day Afternoon. What the? F- I don't know, dude. All right, I don't know. This is confusing the hell out of me. Uh, Sorry. <clears throat> Dog Day Afternoon. Dick Tracy, The Irishman, and as I said he before, was good in the Scarface. Irishman. I didn't really see good. The Irishman. Oh my god, dude! Come on. Such a freaking good movie. I I'm like. Really? You're I, gonna you're gonna. <laughs> I you're like gonna the come Irishman. at me. No, you're gonna come at me for, for movies I haven't watched. Yeah, because you do it to Even me. Even though half, yeah, because half of the ones that are really good I you know. haven't seen. Okay, here it is. Okay, the the Godfather saga is a TV miniseries, and he was in um, episodes one, two, and three, four. That's it. And that, that was in uh, 1977. Okay, so I was right. All right, Dick. Anyway, um, I like up too. Yeah. Oh. We're in Al Pacino still. Um, I didn't see Dick Tracy. I don't know what that one is, but that's what he's... I don't know either. He was known for that one as well. He's he's m- most famously known for Scarface. Yeah. Say hello to my little friend. Mm-hmm. Um, next, we have David Spade. He's only in one scene here. Yeah. But he's it's an Adam Sandler movie, so you yeah, can't so you're going to see, you know, a one bunch of these the other. guys. Um, so he plays Monica, and uh, I wanted to stab my eyes out when I saw this. Yeah. Um, he plays Monica, a woman, and, and uh, David Spade is mostly known for his uh, breakout film, Joe Dirt, um, which was one of his first films he's done. Uh, Tommy Boy. So funny. Yeah. Um, he was in The Benchwarmers. Love that movie, too. Classic movie. Great movie. He was actually in The Emperor's New Groove. Yeah, he voices Cusco. Yeah, he was Cusco. Cusco's um, boys, boys <laughs> for Cusco. And then he's in, obviously, Grown Ups 1 and 2. Yeah. Uh, and great, then we, great movies. yeah, those I are, those are really good. I really hope I, I, I want them to make a third one, but if it's they been don't, so you know, long, it's okay. so I don't know. Yeah. Uh, it's all right. 
Then we also have Katie Holmes as Erin, the wife of Jack. Yeah. Oh, she I skipped is, her. Oops. Yeah. Well, I skipped her because oh. I saw you didn't put Scarface on. Yeah, for sorry. Al Pacino. So, yeah. Katie Holmes, take it away. She's known for Rachel in Batman Begins, Disturbing yeah. Behavior, Dawson's Creek, The Giver. Which uh, I had to watch in high school. The Giver? Yeah, we had to read the book. Yeah, yeah. And so we had to watch you, the movie. Wait, you did it in high school? Yeah. I did it in, like, middle school. It might have been middle school. <sighs> I read it in, like, seventh grade. It probably was then, around there. I actually had to do a project on it. And really? I, like... I oh. literally did like a film project, pretty really? much. Like, like, oh, look I don't at you. know where I don't know where it is. Your it's, roots, it's gone. Pretty good. But that's actually how I kind of. It was that, Got into and this? then, yeah, it was okay. it was that, and then, the next yeah. year we had a class called mass media in, uh, in middle school. Okay. And that's kind of where I got the sense of all this, and then I kind of forgot yeah. about it when I got to high school, mm-hmm. and then I realized I was like. Okay, I really enjoy movies. Mm-hmm. Let's do something with movies. Yeah. So, here I am now. I'm with John. We're on the show. You know, we're on the show. Yeah. So, if it, if it wasn't, I think if it wasn't for that mass media class, mm-hmm. I don't know if I would Yeah. be where I am. Yeah. No, for me, I had a broadcasting class my freshman year of high school, and we were just allowed to make skits. Yeah, the, like, so we th- did they didn't offer anything like film yeah. wise no we didn't have anything like that either really yeah. so we had broadcasting which we would do like um a weekly show for my school it would be like the weather for the week and yeah sometimes we would have weather it would be like interviews with some kids and it would be some stupid stuff right. and then there was this one thing we did because me and my friends were just allowed to do whatever because the teacher didn't really care as much my freshman year this was before it changed to the the lady who really got me into this um so it was this guy and he was our teacher he didn't really like care what we did so right we uh we made like a weather skit and it was really really bad we did a recreation of uh interstellar one scene where uh donald glover is in it the scene where he like if you guys have seen interstellar or no sorry i'm not i'm wrong not interstellar the martian um the martian is such a great film by the way yeah. one of my favorites um, so Donner, Donald Glover is in his like executive's office trying to explain how they can get him off of Mars. So like he, he's in there with the pen and he goes around the table and it's like, oh, oops. He goes around the table and he's like, oh, we'll stop here. We'll go around, get, pick him up, get supplies, and then we'll go back home. Right. And that we recreated that scene and it was so bad. We used like a stapler, a ruler, like we did oh it in our God. cafeteria and it was so, so bad. But I'm I mean, trying to find, that's what we did. I'm trying to find if I can, because mm-hmm. one of my middle school, uh, yeah, yep. Okay, wait here. What did you find your video? I found I found his um his YouTube channel. Oh God! That he posted. Let's see if he has your videos. My stuff from when I was in middle school. Oh God, that's terrifying. Oh my God. Yeah. Dude, this is my eighth grade graduation video. Oh no. Oh my god. That's terrifying. This is crazy. <laughs> Hold on. This is insane. This is nuts. Oh no. But um yeah, when I got into high school, I took that class and then the teacher eventually quit and went somewhere else. So we got a new teacher and she worked previously for the NFL. So we oh, I did sick. more of fo- I had a football show that I did at my really? school with this one kid. So we did like mock drafts and stuff like that. I did um a couple like interviews and stuff about football so that really got me into sports broadcasting well making videos about sports hence my eventual youtube channel that i made with my friend from home noah or reggie uh water cooler talk so yeah. we eventually made that so dude i found me oh god let me say this this is terrifying oh no yeah that's terrifying i actually needed glasses yeah that's that's terrifying and i had braces and you know does not look like you yeah i know that's skinny. weird. <laughs> anyway, um, let's jump back into this cast. Um, oh my god! Sorry, we, trip down memory lane. Yeah, that's that's all right. We were there both there. It's okay. <laughs> um, we have Eugenio uh, Derbez as Felipe, and he plays Felipe's grandmother. Which, that was kind of funny. I actually, which thought was that, interesting. I thought, that, I thought that was kind of funny. No, it was funny. Um, and he's mostly known for uh, instructions not included. How to be a Latin lover. Overboard. <laughs> Sorry. Um, 
Dora and the Lost City of Gold, The Angry Birds Movie, and he was actually in Beverly Hills Chihuahua, I could see which that. I liked as as a kid. I liked. Wasn't films. who was the George Lopez played the the like main Chihuahua, right? I don't know. I haven't I seen. It's I been so yeah. long, dude. I honestly couldn't. I tell can't you. believe they made like three of those movies. Yeah, that that was bad. Um, but who's who do we have up next? We have Tim Meadows as Ted. Uh, he is known for Mean Girls, Pop Star, Never Stop, Never Stop. What the yeah. fuck? Yeah, Never Stop, Never Stopping. I'm That's sorry. The name. Yeah. That threw me off. Yeah. Uh, uh, the Ladies Man, and he also. Uh, he, apparently he does mainly TV kinda, shows kinda now. Kind of just TV shows, not not really movies anymore. Yes, I do remember him on Brooklyn Nine Nine. I do. He was he was funny yeah. in that. He he played a cannibal. Yeah, exactly. Which was funny. Uh, the Goldbergs. Have you seen that? No, I have not. So my mom watched it. Yeah, uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, and Space Force. Um, I like Tim Meadows. Um, I don't know why he's yeah. not really in movies anymore. Tim Meadows was also in the uh, funny the, guy. The Grown Ups movies with. With Adam Sandler yeah, and yeah, exactly. all these other guys, I David Spade. To put that in. But uh, yeah, next we have another uh, Adam Sandler family guy. This is uh, Nick Sward Swardson. Swardson. Swar- oh, sorry, Nick Swardson. Um, and he plays Todd. We're stumbling here. I know. I'm sorry. It's no, it's not just you. It's me too. Um, okay. he is mostly known for Grandma's Boy, The Bench Warmers. Bench Warmers. Just is go good. with it. Grown Ups too. I remember him and just go with it because I actually yeah. just watched that recently. Oh, did you? It was actually funny. I was yeah. literally sitting in class, like, <clears throat> like, like trying not to laugh out loud. Such a good and the, and the good thing, the good thing is, is uh, uh, with the masks, yeah, oh, they can't so see good. you like laughing That's or true. smiling. Yeah. And then he is um finally he was in Bolt, the dog the movie, the animated no dog way. movie. I didn't know that. So what I did saw, he play? I don't know who he played exactly. I haven't seen but, that in um, so like, long. On IMDb. Remember Miley Cyrus was like... Yeah, oh my God, she was the, one. Yeah, dude, I thought there was Scared like a fire. Me. So did I. Holy the camera just died, yeah. so there was a loud noise. We thought it was a Oh my God, I thought fire. it was a fire alarm. Um, Especially <laughs> fucking two yeah, days yeah, ago. Yeah, tell, my... tell the story, please. So... A brief story. I was just kind of uh, sitting in my room, just kind of hanging out. I was on yeah. the phone with, with my girlfriend, and out of nowhere... My fire alarm just starts to go off in my building. Yeah. And I literally rush out, grab my keys, you know, grab shoes, whatever, and whatever I do. Yeah. And I I go to the stairs, walk down the stairs, and I just go in my car. I'm sitting in my car. And I just, uh, I'm like sitting in my car. I'm like, fuck, what if this is a real fire? I yeah, left, right? I was like, I was like, I left my computer on. I was oh. like, I left my computer on. Yeah. That's, the, that's the main thing I care about. I know. Out of out of all my stuff, yeah, my computer is one of the main things. Yeah. Um, and then I go back inside. They let everybody back inside. I go up to my floor. I uh, I take the stairs up just because I don't want to get stuck in the elevator. Yeah, that would suck. And what floor are you on? Aren't you like all the way I'm on the, top? the sixth. Yeah. That sucks. Yeah. Like, you just went up six flights of stairs. Went down dude, and up six flights. Did I be gassed? Yeah, I was. <laughs> Damn. Um, and that then stinks. I get I get upstairs. And my entire hallway is full of smoke. Somebody somebody burnt food and like the cops were trying to like, yeah. you know, air out the entire the entire room, the mm-hmm. entire building. Oh god. So that was fun. Mm-hmm. And then I get back in my room, I sit down, like I tell I tell Johnny the story. Yeah, because we were uh we we're what Yeah. We we're playing a game. Yeah. And then all I, all of a sudden we just hear an alarm going off. And then we Did just, you guys actually hear it? Yeah, we heard the alarm. Oh, then we shit. just then your mic cuts off. We're like, oh, oh shit, yeah. he's probably dying or something. <laughs> and then then you text me like, oh, the fire alarm just went off. I'm sitting in yeah. my car. <laughs> yeah. And then 20 minutes later, you get back on, and then all of a sudden, yeah, we hear the alarm go off again. I sit down, the alarm goes off again, and I was like, do I really have to grab myself? And then, but but the the cop shut it off right away. Yeah. Uh, so so we didn't have to so leave the building because I was I was gonna get pissed you were already pissed what do you mean I, uh, get pissed yeah. again you're already so mad well because how how are you so fucking stupid to burn food you'd be surprised dude this isn't the first time my fire alarm's gone off yeah no it's like the fifth yeah one time it went off at six in the morning on a saturday are you joking i was pissed who the hell's up at six in the morning on a saturday in i don't college? know in i don't college? i don't know Nevertheless. and the reason i was so pissed mm-hmm 
It was because I actually had a Saturday class. I had Spanish. You have Spanish on Saturday? Yeah, so? I had it in the fall. That stinks, dude. Yeah, and that's the only reason I was pissed. If it was just a normal weekend, yeah. I would have been fine. But I had to be up in like two hours to go to my Spanish class. That blows. And I, I know was... you didn't go to bed early. You always go to bed late. Well, last semester I actually went to bed pretty early. Oh. I was a good student last semester. Yeah, okay. Um. <laughs> next. What were, what were we saying? We were on, I just did a Nick Swartzen. Oh, okay. So. Who's up next? So up now we have Alan Covert as Otto, the homeless guy. He is known for Grandma's Boy. Along uh, with Nick Swartz. Yeah. 50 First Dates, The Wedding Singer, Grown Ups 2, Hotel Transylvania, Big Daddy, and Happy Gilmore. Yeah. And so I wanted to talk about this. So there is apparently an Adam Sandler verse. Yes. Where a bunch of these characters play the same characters in other movies. Mm -hmm. And Otto is a representation of that. Uh, He is also the homeless guy in uh, Happy Gilmore, where, and then he ends up being Happy's caddy. Yeah. So you kind of see that. And people are saying that there there is an Adam Sandler verse, how all these people play kind of the same role in all these different movies. But with that, there's like no growth. There's no character growth because they're always the same. Yeah. But I guess there's the one guy. Know. There's the one guy from. Uh, I I forget where he. F- I think he first starred in Little Nicky, mm-hmm. where you can do it. Yeah, he's and the then same. He's in, in then bench he's warmers. in. No, not bench warmers. He's in the longest yard. Oh, and, that's what it is. And yeah, the yeah. water boy. Yeah, the longest yard. Um. Yeah, he says, and he's the same guy. Yeah. Um. But yeah, uh, I saw that video as well about the Adam Sandler verse. So that was pretty interesting. Yes, um, very interesting. Something to yeah. talk about, like, like we said. Definitely. Um, so with this cast, is there anybody you would change? Everybody. Um, I just no. I'm, I just wouldn't uh, greenlight the story at all. I would yeah, just cancel no. it. Um, but it's Adam Sandler, so he can greenlight it himself. Yeah, exactly. Because he's producer. Yeah. Um, honestly, like I thought everyone was okay. Like, he, I just wouldn't make this a movie I, on, yeah, no, honestly I, I didn't like either. it um, they were funny bits like we said but um, but most of it was just yeah I didn't really care uh, for it um, now let's talk about the director of the film yep. this is uh, Dennis Duggan and he is known for his work with Adam Sandler um, Happy Gilmore You Don't Mess With The Zohan Big Daddy uh, Grown Ups 1 and 2 and then Benchwarmers um I have to say, don't mess with the Zohan. Isn't bad. No, it's not bad. It's, it's just a okay. little, little weird. A little weird, yeah. Definitely but it wasn't a bad. Bit weird. I'll tell you that. Um, and then he's also acted in a lot of these movies that he's created. Um, okay. More than what we're gonna say, but I just didn't want to list them because they're minor roles. Right. Um, but he acted in Grown Ups One as a referee, and then Grown Ups Two as Doctor Larry. And he's been in his own projects a lot, actually. But like I said, in more of a minor role, like right. he'll come up for a couple scenes, but nothing, nothing major, nothing major. Right. Um, but uh, yeah, he's kind of linked with Adam Sandler, and they've been a, a ton of projects together, as we've just yeah, said. it makes sense. Um, because they work together. There were actually a couple of visual effects scenes that were yeah. decent. They were actually okay. Decent. And this was 2011, so this was uh, 11 years ago. Now, because yeah. it's 22. Good job. Thank you. See, I can do a little bit of math. I can do basic math. It's right. Can't do, um, what was it, 37 plus 46? Yeah, that's too much. <laughs> and while I'm trying to do the show, I can't think like that, all right? So you got to give me a break. So visual effects. Um, there were a few that I noticed, and they were kind of like back to back to back. A lot yeah, of these, actually. a lot of them were. Within like five minutes of each other. So the first one that I noticed was the, the pony scene. Um, Jill gives Jack a list of things that she wants to do. And I believe on that was... Uh, ride a pony it might have not probably been... like go like horseback riding yes like it was they... horseback riding yeah. and then um the that's kids the best they could do yes the best they could do for her um in her like three what well, was supposed to be like a three four day stay for thanksgiving yeah so eventually they go to i guess it was a fair or something it was something like that like and, a carnival fair yeah. or whatever and so they're there and then there was the pony riding thing and you see kids riding ponies and then eventually you see jill wanting to do it and she said no i'm not too heavy i'm not too heavy like i'll be fine then she gets and then she gets on the pony and the pony's legs just like just flatten out kind of kind of scooby-doo yeah yeah exactly if you really think about it they all just like go to the side and she squishes the pony and then everybody starts like laughing yeah 
it was it wasn't that funny <laughs> because you knew it, it was, was going to happen. Yeah. So, yeah. The next one um I thought was actually a little humorous. Um Gary, the son, the adopted son yeah. of Jack, um likes to play with tape. Yes, for he does. For some reason which they don't really talk yeah, about, but it's not necessary whatever. to tell why. Who cares? Um <laughs> this one's actually kind of funny. I thought it was humorous. He actually tapes a hamster to his back. And uh, he rides around in like uh, a skateboard or a little bike around the house. Yeah, something. It was brief, so I didn't. I don't really remember it that much. But he rides around with the hamster taped to his back, and you see the hamster like, like scared. And it was it was kind of funny. Yeah, and it kind um, of, if you think about it now, it kind of reminded me of Bugsy from Bedtime Stories, also with Adam Sandler, mm-hmm. which I love that movie. I grew up with that movie. It was a great movie. Yeah, that's true. Um, the next one is the, the bird that Jill has. Yeah. Um, this bird was annoying. Oh my God. I did not like There's it. There's another visual effect that I want to talk about yeah. after you talk about okay. this one. So the bird was actually, uh, squished by Jill at one point. Jack made fun of Jill and she ran away out into the woods again. Like yeah. near Otto's like homeless yeah. bed shack. thing. Yeah. Shack. Um, and then she trips and she squishes the bird and the bird obviously squashes. And so they, they show that. But that's really it for that. Um, um, there's also another one with the parrot where he's in the chocolate fountain, and they kind of, like, show him drinking the chocolate, which is... Really? I must have missed that. <clears throat> yeah, I forget which... I think it was on the cruise. Mm-hmm. Um, did you talk about the jet ski scene? Not yet. I was going to. Oh. Um, so... That was funny. There was a scene where Jack and Jill... Well, no, not Jack. Um, Jill is on a game show, and she... It was The Price is Right. Yep. Which is actually another product placement, which we'll get Not to. Not product eventually. placement, TV kind placement, of, I guess. Yeah, in a way. Um, so J- Jill is on The Price is Right, and so she's allowed to spin the wheel, but yeah. she wants to talk to the, the host. Drew. Drew. And so eventually she ends up spinning the wheel, and she, she knocks up, herself out, yeah. which was fucking hilarious. <laughs> it was actually when so funny. That. And then you hear the thud. Yeah, it's just, you just hear a boom. Her hitting the ground, it was so loud, too. It was great. I thought that was actually kind of funny, yeah. I'm not going to lie. But um, she ends up winning a bunch of stuff because she knocks herself out. She gets a TV, a jet ski. They, they tape a bunch of things to her, to the car. Yeah. Or not tape. Oh, my God. Yeah. They, just... they tie down some things to the car. Yes. So um, one of the things is a jet ski. And um, Jill, <laughs> Jill ends up taking the jet ski in their pool. And yeah. then you see Jack kind of like inside the house looking looking out at them and she he says, They better not like ruin my pool. Yeah, he's like, Don't destroy my pool, yeah. don't destroy my pool. And then you see Jill like take a deep dive with the jet ski. Which is not which possible. is not even possible because of the weight of it and it just won't sink. Um so you see her like take a deep dive with the jet ski and then it pops up in the air and lands on her like Lands on the umbrella and table and breaks it yeah, all. Yeah, just it's, launches it's herself. So that's clearly a uh, CGI. Like they couldn't yeah. do that. So I mean, they could, that but it'd be a little weird. But um, yeah, that is pretty much it for visual effects. Um, yeah, there weren't too many in nothing here. Nothing that... crazy, but it didn't really need it. You know what I mean? Right. There were a couple scenes with the parrot or the bird. But right. Right. It didn't really need it. Speaking of the bird, I hated that bird. Oh my god. Um, whoever voice acted that bird, um. Fuck you. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. It was so annoying and really, really bad. Yeah. Because it didn't sound like an actual bird talking. It sounded like a guy talking. Yeah. And it was. I just don't know who played him. It was It was just bad. But like the, every, uh, I'm sorry, yeah. but like almost every part of this yeah, movie no. was, was um, bad. There were some comical parts, but yeah. you know, majority of this movie. And there were some just... scenes that were actually shot really well, so I want to jump to some cinematography. Um, there was the opening scene of the film where we are introduced to twins. Um, it's a little bit corny, but it, visually it looks very nice. Yeah, and then we get that at the end, too. Yeah, though. we get it at the and end of the film. While the credits are rolling. Yeah, and that's another thing I liked. Um, films that do that, actually, I like a lot because people what? don't like to How stay they... for credits. Yeah. But when they add something in for you to, like, stay, uh, um, keep your attention with, I like that. Because they split the screen in half, and they have the video here, and then they have the credits on the other side. And, like, obviously nobody's looking at the credits, but for a way to get, like, the audience through it is to put something up there. Right. And that's why a lot of animated movies do that as well. Yeah, they, like, so like make minions. bloopers. Or yeah. if, like, they, if they, like, miss, uh, like, if they read their lines wrong. Yeah, exactly. Like, the voice actors, they'll mm-hmm. literally, they'll like, animate that. it to yeah. the 
to the blooper. Exactly. Like um, in the Minions movie, I've seen that because I have a little sister. Um, and sure. Yeah, no, I, I wanted to see that myself. Um, <laughs> I know. At the end of the Minions movie, they have like the Minions jumping on the screen and doing little things at the end of the credits. And mm-hmm. it's just a way to keep your attention. And I think that works really well. Simple as that. Um, but the opening scene, I think it works well. It's a nice like medium shot of the two twins talking. And then it switches. It's like jump cuts from different sets of twins. And it's just it's nice. It's yeah, simple. It, so, is, it is. Yeah. Um, it's good. And there's like an intro credit sequence that I liked. Pretty much showing like the twins' backstory. Oh yeah, like how they grew up together. And how they and grew stuff, up together, yeah. and it was cool because it was, um, it was like a way to visualize their beginnings together. Right. Um, kind of like true story, but yeah, not. yeah, exactly. And it gives us like this old camcorder, yeah, like old camera, like look, and it was kind of neat. Right. I know we're going deep into an Adam Sandler movie, which is so strange, <laughs> but um, I got, I got, there were some things that were actually shot well. The film was terrible, but it was shot. It was shot nice. Right. Certain things. Um, in the beginning of the film, there is a alarm clock scene where Jack is woken up by an alarm clock because he has to go pick up his sister. Yeah, three, what was it, like three something in He the woke morning? up at 3.30, he had to be at, at the airport by four. Yeah. Um, so there's a scene right before it that they're talking, oh, I got to pick up my sister in the morning. And then it quick jump cuts to the alarm clock going off. And it's, yeah. it's, it's simple. It works because it kind of like scares the audience. Oh, it's an alarm clock going off. It's right. loud. It's quick. And so, I mean, it's simple, but it works. Um, and it just makes us feel the alarm. And then the shot eventually pans over from the alarm clock to Adam Sandler in his right. bed um, with his converted Jewish wife. Um, <laughs> Why? <laughs> I, I don't know. Why? Um, but, yeah, that's another thing that was that was interesting. The, yeah. Uh, I don't know why they mentioned that his wife converted to Judaism. There was, there but, was no uh, need. There was no but need for that. It was I, just I a guess, gag. I guess for the... The, the point of yeah. them staying through Hanukkah, I guess. But while we're on the topic of of that, um, this movie's pretty racist. How do, you, some, how do you mean? There are some bad things, and I'm not going to fully dive into it, but they make fun of the, the kid Gary for being Indian. Oh, my um, God. Little yeah, things like that, true. and so we're not going to dive into that. Yeah. Um, but nowadays canceled oh 100 they would totally get canceled adam, for that. adam sandler would get canceled there are a lot in, of bad in ones minute. in this um i hate cancel culture i think it's yeah, the stupidest no. thing some of it was kind of humorous yeah like they made fun of gary <laughs> um they said something i'm not going to say the entire thing but they said oh you're this so you should be good with yeah. computers yep because the sister um told jill that like she, was uh, she set her up how, with the online yeah, dating, and teaching then him how to use the. Computer. Jill says to the daughter, "Oh, you're re- you're like a, a tech a tech whiz, yeah. or a computer whiz." And then she turns to Gary and says, "Oh, I'm surprised you're not because of what yep. you are." Yep. <laughs> and then she <laughs> goes really into funny. a whole spiel. Yeah, um, but yeah, we won't we won't dive into that. Um, but this yeah. movie it would totally be canceled nowadays. Oh yeah. It but, just wouldn't be made. Yeah, the scene the scene where Jack's going to pick up Jill from the airport, he keeps going, I love my sister, I love her shoes, I love my sister, yeah. I love her shoes. Um, and it, it jump cuts and, you know, you kind of got that, mm-hmm. oh, not really voiceover, but kind of voiceover because yeah. you see him driving, exactly. but you don't see his face. You just see yeah. the car pulling up to the airport. Mm-hmm. Um, but, yeah, that's a J-cut visual change, but the audio is still there. Yeah, exactly. And it, it just... A little thing like that, which you notice in every film, but uh, it, it works nice. Yeah. Um, there is another part which we've talked about in the past: um, a frame within a frame, um, and this is when Al Pacino, or when Jack is watching Al Pacino's play, like mm-hmm. his uh, mistake that was like on YouTube or something. Right. And uh, pretty much a frame within a frame is when the director uses something within the scene in front of them to frame the main subject, which was pretty much the computer screen in oh, this okay. scene. And uh, this then it creates a second frame, hence the name Frame Within a Frame. Gotcha. So pretty much Jack was watching Al Pacino's play on his laptop, and that's all it really is. So it's it's a simple thing, but it works nice. It's yeah. showing you that he's watching something on his computer rather yeah. than showing us in person what it actually is, right. which we get later in the film, um, seeing Al Pacino, um, his play. Yeah. Uh, yeah, that was interesting. But um, there's I'm one... sorry, I'm not like I'm just kind of not into this movie. No, so yeah, I know it's okay. I'm not talking so much because this movie's just I have nothing nothing that, good to say. that good to say. About I know, it. but I have one final thing about cinematography here. Um, I actually really enjoyed the movie theater scene. Um, 
not for dialogue or anything like that. <laughs> no. Just the way <laughs> the way it was shot was actually really nice. Um, they had a nice wide shot in the movie theater. Right. And it starts off as a wide shot, and then it will slowly zoom in into the characters. Like our main characters, Jack, Jill, the kids. Mm-hmm. Um, and then they have their conversation, whatever. Like Jack makes fun of her for her phone ringing, tells her to shut it off because that's an asshole thing to do. Right. Answer the phone in a freaking movie theater. Um, and then like it gives us individual shots after like Gary says, oh, you and your sister are really like. Like yeah. it zooms in on the two of them instead of the entire family. Right. And then another, we get another shot, a wide shot after the phone rings and they like go Where back and forth. We see the forth. whole family. We see everything. the whole family yep. again. And then it pans as Jack and Jill are walking out. Jack dumps his popcorn on some guy who's like, oh, I thought it was a guy. <laughs> no, yeah. He was like, uh, something like, shut that chick up. And then the one dude goes, that was a chick? Yeah. And then, and then Adam Sandler dumps the popcorn and goes, yeah, that was a chick. Yes, that was funny. Um, but that wide shot that turns into like a zoom, it actually kind of works well. I'm not going to lie. But, yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I'm sorry. I just I know, can't. I know. It's okay. Uh, some music behind this. There's a lot of well-known yeah uh, uh, music artists that are in this. We more got... than I thought. I'm gonna be completely honest. Yeah, but it's an Adam Sandler movie, so you can kind of use whatever you want. Yeah, we got "Don't Bring Me Down" by Electric Light Orchestra, mm-hmm. which is pretty well known. Yeah, we uh, have the finale from Scarface. Yeah, which uh, Al Pacino was in. Baby, obviously. it's cold outside. The uh, what is it? The Christmas the, classic. The canceled. Christmas classic. Whatever. Oh my god. Um, I can't. We actually deal with have uh Down by uh Jay Sean with Lil Wayne. Yep. Which I thought was interesting. I didn't realize that at first. Then we, we have, have Give It Up by Casey and the Sunshine Band. Mm-hmm. There's uh one by Avril Avril Levine. Yo. Um Goodbye. Fire though. Avril Levine. Oh songs. my god, yeah, her music fire. is fire. Her, I've listened to cause she actually released new music this past year. Really? Or in twenty twenty one. She released an album. Not, Did she really? Not a big fan, I'm going to be honest. Is she not, like... It's not the same. All right. It's not the same. It's upsetting. Um, there's uh, some good songs I'm a here. Believer by the Monkees. Yeah. Um, we have It's Tricky by Run DMC. That's big. That's huge. That's big in this movie. Yeah. Uh, there's also Jump by The Movement. Um, uh, Make Some Noise by the Beastie Boys. Yeah, that's a big one. Uh, we also have Let It Snow, Let It Snow, Let It Snow by uh, Jordan Zevon. Yeah, so I think that's pretty much all we're going to do for music. Yeah, there's not really anything um, crazy. Vacation it, it, by the Go-Go's is the yeah, one, but, but nothing, nothing you know, great. the music fits in where it, where it does. Where it's needed. Uh and and this movie doesn't really have a score. It's not, you know. Yeah. There's n- th- there's nothing that needs to mm-hmm. emphasize this story. Nothing needs to emphasize this story no, because the all. story should not be emphasized at all. Yeah, this like we said, this story should have been canned. Um <laughs> Now Should've that, went to we writer through. what was it? Writer's Writer, Hell. Writer's Hell. Yep. Yeah. Should have went there. Um but now we're going to a little bit of acting. Um this is pretty obvious. This was terrible acting. Oh yeah. The script was terrible, so it didn't help the acting at all. No. When, I think when Jack played Jack or Adam Sandler played Jack, it wasn't as bad. Well, Adam Sandler was because, literally just playing Adam yeah, Sandler. He was playing himself, he so was it wasn't. He was literally that bad. just playing Adam Sandler. But when Jack or when Adam Sandler was Jill. It was terrifying. So bad. It was just really bad. It was just. I know it was supposed to be corny. I know it was supposed to be bad. Yeah. Because that's the hen- that's the entire like meaning but of like, the story. But it was way worse it was than just, I think. It was just so bad. Yeah. I got. I. It was hard to sit through this movie. Yeah. It really was. It was. He was a disgrace as so, Jill. So I see you put here. You said Al Pacino wasn't bad, but wasn't good. I think he was terrible. Yeah. I think he was terrible. Like, I didn't like his it performance. It was so. Weird, so odd. It was just strange, you it know. Was, yeah. Like I didn't think it was good by any means, but it wasn't like as bad as Adam Sandler playing Jill. I think he was better than that. Okay, that's that what you're sense? comparing it to. Yeah, then, exactly. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll give you that. Okay, so yeah. he wasn't like god awful like Jack or like Jill, but he wasn't good. At right. All. So I think the you only I mean? I, scene I liked with Al Pacino was literally the ending. Yeah, that was. That I think was that's just the strange, only. I think bro. that's the only good scene with him. When he comes in dressed as like a no. freaking. Which oh, one? Like, like where Jack and him are sitting watching the 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 commercial. Oh yeah. That was like the so only good the scene with that. him. Yeah, that was funny with the Dunkachino. Yeah. Um, and then so like acting obviously was not good, but uh. Script was even. The worse. script was even worse. <laughs> we wrote here that the script was absolutely horrible. 
um, the writing was just terrible. Like, why why would you write this story? That's what I don't understand. Uh, I don't know, man. I don't get I it. I really don't. And obviously, like, this script and film was just meant for, for children. It was not meant for, like, oh, it's a good Adam Sandler movie. Like, yeah. Like, obviously, most of his movies are meant for children, but, like, I don't know. I didn't love it. It was just, it was it was so, just bad. Bad. so bad. Um, so, yeah, I have two mistakes here that I want to mention. Yeah, go ahead. No, so, there's one of them's mine. Don't take my I mistake. Know. Sorry, we have two of them here. Come on. Um, during the Thanksgiving dinner, Adam Sandler's wife, Erin, is drinking her water, and then she puts it down. Uh, Jill is going off on, like, a rant at this time, and Erin picks up her drink again, and she actually finds a hair on the glass, and then she picks it off. Um, I don't think it was intentional. I think it was just, like, the actor actually in the just scene found just, like, found a hair and picked it off. Not not really a mistake. It's just something I noticed. Right. Um, so, yeah, I'll let you jump into your, your mistake. So... Uh, during the scene on the cruise in the jump rope scene, mm-hmm. there is one shot where Jack and Jill are literally facing the camera, and you can clearly see it is neither Adam Sandler for both of these yeah, characters. I know. That was rough. Uh, you can see one guy has literally like a five o'clock shadow. Really? It's that yeah. bad? Yeah. Like, oh, God. Here, I'll try to find like a picture. Yeah, there was another one um, where Jill was playing soccer with, um, yeah. what's his name? Uh, for Felipe. The, yes. The guy, yeah. yeah, he was playing Felipe. Um, they were playing soccer, and then at one point they were dancing. There was a scene where, like, it was obviously shown that it wasn't uh, Jill dancing. Yeah. It was like a a stand-in that was dancing for them. Like they didn't show the face, so it was meant it was meant to be like hidden. Oh come on! But no, uh, I don't it was just it was horrifying seeing that. Um, not really a mistake, but they had a stand-in come in for for Adam Sandler. Everything's on YouTube. Hold on, let me. Yeah, yeah, okay. Just um, give me a second. I'll freeze yep. frame on it. Mm-hmm. So, in in terms of mistakes, there weren't really that many. It just this movie just wasn't good. Yeah, no, this so, movie was not good whatsoever. Yeah, um, I don't know. These mistakes weren't really big. Like the one with the Thanksgiving dinner, it wasn't necessarily a mistake. I just think it was the actor naturally just doing that, and then the jump rope scene that was pretty obvious. Yeah, just give me one more second. Yeah, you're good. Um, I wanted to mention some Easter eggs once once we're done with this. Um, I actually have a couple. I actually have quite a bit um, that I thought were kind of funny. And then we actually have a little new segment on the show, which I want to mention. So For certain movies. For certain movies, yeah. <laughs> you don't get your whole, whole new segment, John. Yeah. No, I'm kidding. You could have whatever you want. Yeah, it's okay. Um, did you find it yet? I did, but it's... The Wi-Fi is being... Yeah, the Wi-Fi in this room stinks, so I don't... Kind of slow, so just um, go into it. I'll show you when when I get the chance. So Easter eggs. We have a lot of cameos in this film, which I thought was kind of funny. We have Johnny Depp appearing in this film, and uh, he's actually wearing a Justin Bieber shirt, which I thought was kind of funny. So, yeah, Johnny Depp wearing a a Justin Bieber shirt. Minimal. Big, big... Big Justin Bieber fan, right? Yeah, there. I guess he was. Um, we have a cameo from the Cowboys uh, Hall of Fame receiver, Michael Irvin. Yeah, I, I realize that now. Yeah. I honestly, Did you not I, I that? didn't really pick up on it. I was really? just trying to kind of get through the movie. I, I know, but uh, yeah, I noticed it. He was in a few scenes actually. He was in, I think, yeah. two or three scenes. So more than actual actors. Yeah. Like um, David Spade. That was Can another mess. Can not talk about that? Yeah, that was that was horrifying. <laughs> that was so bad. Um, next, we have Al Pacino. Um, he's appearing as himself. And uh, he's actually shown on playing Richard III on stage. But in reality, Pacino directed and starred in a documentary about the making of a production of Richard III titled Looking for Richard in 1996, which I thought was a little interesting, a little fun fact about the show. Um, so you understand why... He was playing um, Richard III in that play during the film. Um, there is one more. See, it's clearly neither of them. Oh, my God. You're right. They're, like, su- they're super skinny. It's not Adam yeah. Sandler. And, like, here, I'll even, I'll, like, play it for you. Oh, my just God. Wait. Just wait till, like, there is yeah. one part where literally they're, like, facing it, and you can clearly yeah, see it. Yeah, that's a... terrible. How do, do you do know? That? Did you know about this? What about that? That's Adam Sandler's kids. Oh, is it really? Yeah. Oh, so that's I didn't know that. that's kind of a cameo. Okay, since so yeah. we're on the topic in of this, that. In the same scene with the the jump rope, 
Adam Sandler's kids are shown in like a, a two second golf, clip. Yeah. yeah, playing mini golf, which I thought was pretty cool. Um, you didn't even know that. Stop trying to play. I didn't know. You just showed me. <laughs> so there's yeah. one more. No, Adam Sandler tries to put his kids or his w- or his even his wife yeah. in in uh, yeah. a lot of cameos. Yeah, I thought that was interesting. Um, I have one more Easter egg here, mm-hmm. which I want to talk about. Mm-hmm. Um, so. In the Dunkachino commercial, Al Pacino sings, You want creamy goodness, I'm oh. your friend. Say hello <laughs> to my chocolate blend. And that is referencing his famous, uh, the famous Scarface quote, Say hello to my little friend. It's, yeah. it's like a plan words. So I thought that was interesting. Um, and then I want to jump into so my he, new favorite so, segment. So, so here's Johnny's new segment. Um, in, in movies, I'm going to give you a little preface here. In movies, every time I watch a movie, I notice every single product placement. I have no idea why. I just do. He loves, so he anytime loves product placement. there is a brand shown in a movie, I notice it. And I, I always point it out just because I'm like that. So, like, I'll see a car and it's like a – it's clearly meant to be shown. So it would be like a Mercedes Benz and I'm like, oh, product placement. Right. I'll see, like, a Coca-Cola bottle, product placement. Or, like, a Dove soap bar, something like that. Anything. Yeah, something And I'll stupid. notice it. So in this movie, there's actually quite a bit and I want to talk about it. So um, in Jack's office, after Jill runs away, we have a scene of – Jack in his office on his computer. And this is when we see, um, what's his name? Al Pacino's play. Right. So we see Jack on his computer and is a Veal computer, I believe. I don't know really how you pronounce it. Don't even know. But it is a clear product placement. They show the computer multiple times throughout the film. Right. There is one full frame of just the computer brand on the screen at one point, which I'm like, why do you do that? That's probably how they got there. You know, Probably. most of their funding for this, yeah, this through movie. through all this stuff. Yeah, um, there is another one in the movie theater scene, which I talked about before, which I actually liked. Um, there is Coca Cola cups in each person's like cup holder. Yeah. Um, in each they have like they don't really focus on it, but it's there when they have like right. the the medium shot, which is close up on the the um the three people, Jack, Jill, and right his and the son. son Gary. Yeah, you can clearly see the Coke. Uh, cups in their like holders so i noticed that um next when we're at al pacino's house towards the the end of the film when jill goes over you you see his little ipod and it is a sony ipod so i noticed that yeah um next once they get on the cruise at the end of the film adam sandler is wearing a hat and it is a uh, a hurley hat which is a a big hat brand yeah so it was like a minute or two of screen time for that there was also uh two more that that johnny I uh, he, to he 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 thought of it, but he didn't even. Like, I didn't even think really, to write yeah. it down, but it was because uh, it was obvious. Right, right in the beginning, uh, Pepto Bismol because yeah. he's doing a commercial for it. Adam Sandler's mm-hmm. uh, doing a commercial for it, and then of course Dunkin' Donuts at the which end. Which is of the like film. the premise of the entire yeah, film, which I just much. didn't think to write because it's you it, you notice it and it's really obvious. Right. So. And yeah. I don't think that they, they, they would have never been able to say Dunkin' Donuts or Pepto Bismol if they weren't you know yeah. either giving them money or mm-hmm. you know having something yeah, else exactly. like they had a deal going on yeah so that is my <laughs> my segment product placement um if we notice things in other movies i will try and try and put them in but uh yeah Great. that was a little fun <laughs> uh, that was a better side of this show because the rest of the movie is terrible but um yeah do you want to jump into the movie ratings of this film yeah so uh the movie ratings really really on... good <laughs> really good ratings here great guys. great ratings probably one of the best scores i've ever seen yeah it's incredible. Um, so on IMDb, it has a 3.3 out of 10. For Rotten Tomatoes, it has a 3%. And for Metacritic, it has a 23. Wow. I'm surprised Metacritic is that high. I know. But Rotten Tomatoes? <laughs> at a 3%. you got to be kidding me. I think that's, I wanna, I think is that's this perfect. Is this the worst graded movie of all time? I, I don't know. but it was I'm going to look it up. Every single time I... Looked at like so we wanted to do a bad movie mm-hmm. like we said for you guys, and I, I looked up bad movies and I looked on every single <laughs> list and this movie it's showed up on yeah. every single list I looked at. Yeah. Um. Okay. So here we go. I'm on Rotten Tomatoes and I'm looking at the worst graded movies. So what did you? Look, there are some you... that actually have zeros. Really? Yeah. It's there are multiple that have three. Like this movie here, but zero percent. There's actually four, 40 list movies of that films, have zero. List of films with zero percent on Rotten Tomatoes. Wow, 
Dark Tide 2012, Stolen 2009. Uh, Let's see if there's Folks, any like, 1992. Yeah, I saw that. Simon Says 1999. Max Steel 2016, so that's newer. Precious Cargo from 2016. Pinocchio, the 2002. Good. Uh, Transylvania from 2009. God, this is terrible. Transylvania or Transylvania? I think it was Trans. Oh, sorry. Yeah, Transylvania, not. Fuck no! I didn't want to click on it. Um. The ridiculous six has a zero percent. What? Are you serious? Yeah, I swear to God. I actually enjoyed that movie. A little bit, at least. Yikes. They also have uh, Jaws: The Revenge. Really. The nineteen eighty-seven film. Oh yeah, right. Huh. What the Jaws franchise was milked. Yeah. They milked the yeah. crap out of that uh, franchise. Um, oh, my God. Do you remember Super Babies, Baby Genius? Super Babies? Yeah. Wait, I think I do. The second one has 0%. Wait, that's, wait. That's, that's, find that's that. terrible. Pinocchio 2002 has a 0. Yeah, I, I said that. Gotti. Wait, which one was Super Babies? Forget about it. Which one was Super Babies? I don't remember. I just remember the first one. watching it. This is the uh like what's the uh that's the the cover for it. Yeah, I know. I saw that, but what's the I don't remember what the first one's about. It doesn't really matter as much, but I can't believe pretty much Super Babies. Babies. It's just bad jokes. And I, I don't know. This is coming from babies, so it's not funny. So Dude, why is the only the second one coming? Did they only make a second one? I don't think so. I think so. Super Babies Baby Genius 2. What? Seems like that's the only one what? That's that doesn't make any right? sense. Why is there a second one if not? I don't know. The first, I'm confused. <laughs> it's got a two point six. Oh, it's just called Baby Geniuses, the uh, first one. That's why, I found it. Whatever. Okay. I don't care too much. Anyway, um, do we agree with these ratings? Yes. I think Front Tomatoes is probably the closest one. <laughs> yeah. Um, Metacritic probably. is honestly a little too high. <laughs> that's, what, that's what I was thinking. So is IMDb. I was thinking. If if I'm gonna be real, I now, would give IMDb's, it like a, a fifteen uh, well, yeah. to a ten. Well, because if you think about it, IMD is giving it a thirty three percent. Yeah, uh, exactly. Metacritic, I think, I f- is extremely way too high. I feel like ten to fifteen is the proper rating for this percent. Because there are actually some parts that are funny and something visually look actually okay. Yes, it's just the acting and the script were freaking disgustingly bad. Yeah, they That's were. All. They were really really bad. Um, but yeah. Um. Actually, going to go into some budgeting and earnings. This movie was surprisingly made a lot of money. Yeah. Um, the budget was seventy nine million dollars. Crazy how so much money. So our last made. film we did was Hacksaw Ridge. It had almost double the budget. Yeah. That's than, ridiculous. Than Hacksaw Ridge and Hacksaw Ridge was f- freaking phenomenal. Phenomenal. Such a good movie. Ridiculously good. Um, and with the budget. Adam Sandler was paid twenty million dollars for this movie. Are you fucking kidding me? Twenty million dollars. Are for you this, for two roles? Fucking kidding me? I'm dead ass. Twenty million dollars to, what pe- are to we, play this wh- shitty movie. What are What are we doing? What are we what doing are we wrong? Doing with, yeah. What are we doing with our lives? I I need to do this. I need to do this. He literally played himself. Yeah. And he I got know. paid twenty million fucking dollars. Yeah. Isn't that insane? And so with that. Um, opening weekend, they earned twenty-five million dollars, so that covered Sandler's. That's paycheck. literally yeah, Sandler. And then overall, worldwide, they earned a hundred and fifty million dollars. How? How is that possible? This I, movie is I, so. I, bad I understand. I understand because that, it's a that it was it's a Sandler movie, and everybody. I I feel like everybody that went to go see it came out and was like, "I want my money back." Uh, yeah, I would want that too, dude. This movie was so bad. Yeah. Um, Speaking of really bad, um, some awards. <laughs> how did you, how did you go from bad because, to awards? Because oh, okay. this makes sense. They were awarded for being really bad, and oh, really? I want to get into this. Yes, there is an awards ceremony called the Razzies, or the the Golden Raspberry Awards, and it's a parody award show, um, honoring movies or the work's cinematic underachievements, and it's an actual thing. Like actors go to this if they are awarded really with, for being in a bad movie um so this essentially um <laughs> they won or did they really win they, they I lost know. i don't know about that they lost it's pretty much the, the it's like the oscar grand slam best picture actor actress director and screenplay 
So they lost all of they those? They lost all of those. So they had the worst picture, worst actor in Adam Sandler, worst <laughs> actress, Adam Sandler, worst director, <laughs> and worst screenplay. That makes me so angry that they classified it as an actress I know, as they Adam did. Sandler. Yeah. So technically that counts as wins. So they totally, in total, they had 19 nominations and five wins or losses because they were worst movie. Um, and this was the second time that uh, something sweeped the Razzies. Um, the last time it was uh, with uh, Jig- Jiggly in 2003. I don't uh, I, have I have no, no idea. idea what that is. Um, but, yeah, they had 19 total nominations. And they actually uh, won Worst Film in three separate award shows. So that counts as part of their, their five wins. So they actually won two other things, but one of them was actually a win for Best Actor for Adam Sandler. And this was at the uh, the Kids' Choice Awards, which which makes sense because kids will, you know, I don't know. I'm looking, at, I'm looking at Jiggly or Giggly right now, whatever. Yeah. What is that uh, about? I, I don't uh, – I'll, I'll read the plot in mm-hmm. a second. Larry Giggly is assigned by a crime boss to kidnap the brother of a prominent – prominent district attorney yeah a beautiful woman known as ricky is sent to stay with him to J-Lo? make sure yep wow. make sure he doesn't mess up the job um this was think, a six percent on rotten tomatoes when did this come out 2011 2003 2003 yeah with ben, ben affleck, affleck ben affleck and j-lo have been in a lot of films together they were surprisingly too, right Weren't they not dating? at this time no, no but she they was, did she was married point. at a-rod she was married to a-rod probably at this point oh i don't know they're dating now Oh, so they're dating now then. Okay. Yeah. But this is for the second time, if I'm correct. Is it? I think so. I don't know. I don't follow celebrities that much. I don't really care too I much about, care about their relationship status. Yeah, the only thing all. I really care about is Johnny Depp, that trial right now. Yeah, which is, is a big thing. That's a big at, thing. At the moment, but probably when you guys are going to be seeing this. It might be over. It'll, it'll reach a verdict, most um, likely. But yeah, Adam Sandler won Best Actor at the Kids' Choice Awards. So yeah. we're doing something wrong here. And we really are. We are. We uh, need to get into... We got to get an agent. I think so. That's a great <laughs> idea. I think we need an agent. Um, I guess now we can jump to our favorites. Any agents least, out there want to want to want to come talk to us? Yeah. DM us on Instagram, One Shot Podcast Official. Yeah. Oh shit, no. It's movie One Shot official. Movie One Shot oh. Movie Podcast Official. Sorry. I, I should ch- really I should really change that. Eh, it's okay. It's right. It's really one, long. one day, one day. So I'm I'm looking at the time here. We've been going on for almost an hour talking about the one of the worst movies of all time. Oh, I know. Somehow, so I want to go into it's our because we keep getting sidetracked. We keep having our own conversations. It's okay. We don't want to talk about the movie. <laughs> we really don't. Um. So let's talk about our favorites or least favorites. Okay. So <laughs> you can go first since I went first for okay. Hacksaw. Um. Yeah. So my favorite scene is the dinner scene, the Thanksgiving dinner scene. Um. <laughs> just because it's it's a little humorous. Oh my God! It's great. Um. So. <laughs> It caught me so off guard. I know what you're gonna say. Yeah. So pretty much, uh, in the film, they talk about like twins having like telepathy twin power. or twin powers. Just pretty much how they twin can power. so they can feel when each other are like getting hurt or if they're hurt. And Jill says, "Oh yeah, we have this power." Yeah. And so Jack's like, "No, we don't." Right. And then she starts like smacking herself like on the face. She's like, so, like Do you "I'm feel smacking that? myself now." And Jack, Jack's like, "I don't feel it. Do it harder." Yeah. And so she's smacks- Jesus Christ. <laughs> <laughs> so so Jack's like, smack yourself harder. I don't feel it. So she keeps doing it. Yep. And then she like she's smacking herself hard. So then yeah. Aaron like grabs her, like, stop. Stop. He's just doing and then, and then <laughs> keep going. I don't want to take it. And then you. all of a sudden you just see Gary with a fucking salt shaker taped to his head punch the shit out of Jill and knock her to the floor. <laughs> so funny. So funny. It is so funny. Oh, oh God. God. That, that was by, by far my favorite scene in this film. It was so Because all of a sudden you just see Gary with a fucking salt shaker on her head. And then she gets up and then she's like, oh, well, this needs some salt. And, and, then, she and then she grabs the him by the fucking salt shaker <laughs> on his head and like starts twisting it onto her plate. Yeah. It's so oh funny. Oh, my God. Um, and with that, my favorite quote is by Jack or Adam Sandler. He's talking to Al Pacino, and Al Pacino says, um, when I look at her, I see myself. Somehow, which I don't even get. But yeah. then Adam Sandler or Jack goes, when I look at her, I see me too. Pretty much, like, because yeah. it is him. So, And this was a scene where Al Pacino was trying to convince Jack to go get him, the yeah. girl, or Jill. Man. Uh 
So, so what's yours? So my favorite scene is the the scene where no, uh, Jill knocks herself out <laughs> the fucking wheel on <laughs> on the Price is Right. Oh, that's it's so, good. so funny because like she's so happy, so giddy, and she's yeah. like, "All right, I'll spin the wheel." <laughs> Doof. She just knocks herself she out. Drops the noise like that she... it makes, dude, it is so loud. The thud and, and the and the and the thing where and where she just literally like hits the ground. Like, oh my god! Oh it's my so god. funny. I wanna I wanna find the sound. Yeah. Uh, the thud. Yeah. Jill knocks her, oh herself shit. out. If I can, yeah. So yeah, while you find that, there are actually some fun facts that I want. Two fun facts I want to go over. One that leads into the other. So the voice that Adam Sandler uses for Jill is actually the same voice that he uses in his soundtrack, Do It For Your Mama, which is on his second album, meaning really? meaning that Adam Sandler has music released. So, no, he does his like he does most of his comedy specials in 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 music, yeah. like like in in like song form, kind of yeah. like how Bo Burnham does it. Exactly, which I never knew. So yeah. I'll let you I'll let you play this if you have it here. All right, hold on. But uh, yeah, Adam Sandler released music. So this is, is the is whole terrifying. scene. This is the voice too for Jill. Yeah. All right, all right. Hey, Gary, Sophie, come on, guys, one dollar. Dollar's the winner. Good luck, Jill. <laughs> fucking fun, bro. It's so good. Oh my god. Um, so that was just. And like she no. drops, like oh she hit the floor she, hard, dude. She drops oh like a God. fucking sack of potatoes. Yeah. Um. So oh my, my fun God. fact before we wrap up and give our final scores, um, Adam Sandler actually has multiple albums, and I never knew this until yesterday. Yeah. Until Thursday, um. The the fifth of April, I never knew that. And his first album debuted in 1993, and he has albums coming out every couple of years until at least 2004 or five. Like of his own, not ones that are linked to movies. Right. So I never knew that. Yeah, he. I, I think it's. I, it's I don't more know like a it, comedy. Thing. It's probably his comedy special. But he actually that he doesn't does. sound like completely awful. Yeah. No. But it might be because it's mixed. But yeah. Still. Well, I actually want to. Before we wrap this up, I want to. I want to talk about one more scene that I actually did enjoy. <laughs> the scene where where Jill is at, you know, Felipe's, you know, whole whole yeah, thing. This... When she keeps just fucking. Rocking the grandma oh with the soccer God. ball and like the the shoe. the shoe and but the funniest part was they were like oh jalapenos jalapenos, oh jalapenos. <laughs> I love that I was so confused like why does she need jalapenos <laughs> but and, it's like they're and like they uh, all surround her with like baskets of jalapenos like <laughs> give her jalapenos 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 and they're just like shoving her in her mouth and she's just like with her one little snaggle tooth just yeah, like just, chomping on it I'm like. I'm like, oh my god, no. This is terrifying. It was so funny. It's an ugly ass grandma oh with a little god. snaggle tooth. Dude, when I saw the grandma, I was like, oh my god. I was terrified. I know. I, so was I. I was like, what it the was fuck? so bad. Oh my god. Oh. That was terrifying. <laughs> Jesus. But uh Christ. yeah, that wraps up our No, we gotta give our ratings. Yeah, we gotta give our ratings. Thing. We gotta give our ratings. Um so we you know, we grade these movies on three scales, acting, plot, and then overall, and um Acting for me, I'll, I'll start off. Could you start off last yeah, episode? Yeah, go ahead. Hacksaw. Um, I'm gonna give acting a one. I was, I'm, I'm right there with you. Just bud. because it's so bad. It's so bad. It's just really bad. And with acting, the Felipe character, he was actually probably the he best. He was acting probably the best one, it. but it was still bad. I'm yeah. kidding. I'm kidding. I, that was kind of funny. Like sometimes, it was funny, though. but like the first two times. Yeah. Like that's it. Yeah. And but uh, I don't know. He was probably one of the better. Better actors. Yeah. Also, yeah, was. Otto was actually pretty yeah, he good, was, too. Yeah, he was solid. But he plays the same character he's right. always plays. So, right, right. So, you know. But, um, so you, you're going to go with a one as well, you said? Yeah. Okay. Um, plot, I'm going to go with a one as well, because this just didn't make any sense. I'm giving it a zero. I'm I serious. I'm giving it a zero. Honestly, I'm sorry. Honestly, yeah, I'm just changing it. Mine's a zero as well, because there was no point in this film. There was, uh, this film didn't need to be made. It didn't need to be made at all. Like I understand, she's coming for a vacation right. for the holiday. And her I mom understand died. it was supposed to like kind of be funny and you yeah, know, but it but just didn't, it, it it didn't, didn't work. It didn't work. Not at all. And then overall, I'm gonna go with a one Same. for this because it's just so it so bad. Yeah. The only thing that's giving it a one is the certain shots that I liked, which were actually like yeah, shot the certain decently. funny, certain funny scenes that yeah. I liked. That's so why maybe, it's giving maybe, a one. Maybe overall, I'll give it a two. I'm changing mine to a two okay. because cinematically, I'm still giving it a one. cinematically, certain things looked good. And there were like 
two or three funny scenes. That's yeah. it. Yeah. So I'm going uh, overall with a two, even uh, though I gave I'm, one thing a zero. But I'm I'm still gonna I'm still gonna give it a one. Yeah. Uh, out of for for overall. So from me, that is a one zero one. Yeah. And for Johnny, it is uh, just rough. <laughs> just rough. <laughs> just, just a terrible movie. I'm going to one zero two. Yeah. And the thing that kind of hurt the most is I had to go, I, I, I went, I, I watched a, a bit of it before yeah. going to see Multiverse of Madness. Phenomenal movie, by the way, yeah. Multiverse of Madness. And then I have to come back. <laughs> watch the shit show <laughs> watch of a movie. This fucking train wreck of a movie. Yeah, that was rough, I'm sure. But, uh, but yeah. yeah, that um, really wraps it up. Yeah, that wraps up episode 10 of... How did we go on for an hour about this freaking It's because we movie? just, we, we kept doing our own oh thing. Oh, my God. Because we, we kept getting sidetracked because we didn't yeah, want to talk about I this. Know. But, yeah, that really wraps it up. Thank you guys so much for tuning in and listening. Yeah, thank we, you guys. We uh, appreciate all the support on our 10th episode now. Yeah. All the way um, to 10. That's crazy. And also, uh, we have actually one thing to say. We, we have stickers coming. Yeah. Um, so if you actually want a sticker, maybe, you know, DM us on Instagram. We'll, we'll try to get you a sticker out. Yeah. Uh, it has our logo. It has our QR code, uh, to, for all of our links. Yeah. So if you guys want one, yeah, if you guys want one, let us know. Uh, maybe we'll come out with posters. Maybe we'll see. Maybe. We'll see. We'll, we'll, we'll see, see how, how it goes. We'll see how it goes. Yeah. But, yeah. Thank you guys so but much for But we listening. really want to thank you all for the support. You guys have, have done so much and we actually mm-hmm. can't thank you guys enough. The, yeah. The views are insane. The listens are insane. We're actually almost to uh, a 50 listener. Well, as of today, as of today, May 6th, I will actually tell you the count. Because mm-hmm. I looked the other day and it was it was so kind of close. For, we have 37 plays and we are almost at our uh, 50, 50 listener mark Yeah. to kind of get us to that that goal. Yeah, and and, and we really, really cool. want to. Yeah, it's it's awesome, and we really want to thank you guys. Yeah, we for appreciate that. all the love. Thank you guys so much for tuning in, and uh, for our next episode, we're gonna actually have a guest on. So yes, yeah. and uh, moving forward, we're gonna have some more guests. Yes, we are, and and also uh, we just want to say if you have any suggestions, mm-hmm. please, please, please feel free to yeah, DM us, let us on, know if you want us to on, a movie. Uh, on Instagram at One Shot Movie Podcast Official. Mouthful, but yeah, yeah, it's okay. Uh, and and if you have any anything else to say about any of the movies, let favorite us know. Scene, least like, favorite scene. If you wanted an actor to be changed, yeah. Um, if you just hated a movie, let yeah. us know. If if you have a horrible movie, we'll we'll bear through it again, and yeah. we'll. Because we'll, this we'll one do wasn't it. like completely awful to watch because it was. So they they were a little they were little comedic bits. But like, if I have to watch the room, God, it was so I bad. I, I've never seen it. I did not hit her. I did not. Oh, hi, Mark. If if those listening, if you know this movie, it's probably one of the worst of all time. <laughs> yeah. But uh, yeah, that really wraps it up. Yeah, wraps it up, ties it with a bow we'll for, for us here. Yeah, yeah. we'll see you guys in uh, two weeks with another episode with yep. some guests. See you. See you soon.